What's up everybody, this is Wanderer here. Uh, so today's video is going to be a bit different. This video is just a stream highlight from a stream that I did last year. And the reason I'm making this is to kind of fit within a Wanderer's perspective. Obviously, you know, last year I made the video on the Brotherhood of Steel and why I don't like them being in Fallout 76. And I did a discussion stream after that uh, on like, you know, getting community feedback on what they think and possibly having a couple of debates and conversations over this topic. So this is just a couple of highlights from that stream. I've been meaning to do this for a while now. Um, I just never really got around to it. Uh, and I'm going to do the same with the stream I'm doing on May 9th. It's currently Revenge of the 5th right now as I'm recording this. So uh, yeah, so the, the one that I'm doing on May 9th will also have a similar video come out after this. And if you want the full unedited thing, it is currently unlisted in the A Wondrous Perspective playlist that's on my youtube channel so if you want to go view the full thing then by all means go for it the reason i'm doing this is to kind of give you guys a bit more content and tell you i'm alive and not leave you just in the dark for seven months like i did while i was doing my uni work um and i also want to buy myself time so i get more production quality into some of the videos i'm currently working on Right now I'm working on a video on Darth Cyan from Knights of the Old Republic 2, and I'm also in the process of writing my video on Father Elijah, which is going to conclude my Brotherhood of Steel series. And from there, I'm going to move on to my own stuff once again, which are like, you know, Wanderer of Fallout story, which I did last year, which I am doing a one-year retrospective on, or at least planning it. So, yeah, I've got my work cut out for me, and this is just going to kind of buy me a bit more time, if you know what I mean. Either way, uh, enjoy. First off, before we do anything, I want to go to my YouTube channel and then we're going to re-watch through my video and I'm going to kind of explain more in depth some of my points if I didn't already. Uh, I feel like that could be a, a cool little thing to do. So, if you've watched the video, you know my you know my reasons. You can go watch it if you want. Okay, so that's my first point. It's very far away. So, the reason I made this this kind of point is because... Obviously, West Virginia and California, completely separate states, really far away on the US map. Um, and the reason I think that Maxon wouldn't really be focusing on something so far away is because he had his own priorities in line. Like, by this point, if I'm correct, he hadn't even set up the, the ranks of Knight, Scribe, Paladin yet. And uh, it was only, like, Elders or something. Lost Hills wasn't actually established fully like the this the area surrounding lost hills was not pinned down yet uh that's something i mentioned in my history of the brotherhood vi video uh where i say basically the on uh, not the enclave fuck i'm all over the place uh the brotherhood of steel actually went to war with the vipers uh the vipers is in the raid gang originating from vault 15 um the reason they went to war is because the Vipers were actually causing a bit of a ruckus to, I think it was, the, I believe it was south of Lost Hills, and that was area that the Brotherhood wanted, and the Brotherhood were paranoid about the Vipers getting the upper hand, and having more territory than them. So, uh, Elder Maxon at the time dispatched a force to wipe them out, Elder Maxon dies, and then, uh, heads, uh, head paladin rhombus, uh, basically exterminates the entire raider force, um, Meaning that the Brotherhood of Steel had eventually conquered that. But that was in 2155. Obviously, uh, Fallout 76 place takes place in the latest 2104, I believe. So, with that... Yeah, I, I don't see this as making very much sense for them to focus on something so far away when they hadn't even got the rest of the, uh, the, the area surrounding Lost Hills yet. It, they, they had so much stuff that they did later that just it, it kind of overrules anything that happens in 76 or so 76 attempts to retcon it and that's not something i appreciate and that's not something i like uh, i also mentioned later in this segment sergeant dennis allen sergeant dennis allen was a member of the brotherhood of seal who in 2134 dispatched a small outcast group to go to the glow to search for technology there against elder maxon's wish so, with that knowledge, we know that the ranks of Knight, Scribe, and Paladin had not been established, at least in old lore. But recently, Bethesda have decided to retcon it so that in 2082, that's when Maxon made the full list of Brotherhood of Steel uh, ranks. But I, I dislike that. I feel like 76, even having the Brotherhood there in the first place, spits in the face of the old games and their story and their lore. And I feel like that's kind of disrespectful, in a way. Just to shoehorn a faction that people easily recognize as Fallout, uh, 
for the cost of what ruining the older games and their their stories and invalidating some of the stories told there i'm not gonna buy it but but have surely had to focus on his own people's priorities before anything that's another thing right i want to expand on this point a bit more so obviously maxon i've already went over why i don't think it would make sense for maxon to focus on West Virginia and people in West Virginia specifically because he had his own priorities. But the Brotherhood is known throughout the franchise, or at least some of the earlier games, to be total douchebags to anybody that isn't their own. So why would he reach out? I, I feel like Fallout 76, in a way, is too filled with hopium, um, where everybody's nice to each other. Uh, I'm not talking about the community here, by the way. The community is lovely, and I think that's great. But I'm talking about the, the NPCs and the stories in-game. Everything is filled with, with hope. When Fallout 76 of all of the games should be the most desolate, should be the most, uh, you know, soul-crushing entry into the Fallout series because of how early it is after the bombs dropped. Instead, the entire map bar a couple regions such as the Ash Heap, such as the Toxic Valley, such as the Cranberry Bog, and maybe even the Mire as well, I don't know. Um... But most of these places, especially the forest, actually, um, most of these places in the game, to me at least, look like they haven't been struck by one nuke. I'd say the only places I have are the, uh, the biomes that I mentioned before. I think it's a, a decent idea to have like a Fallout map split into biomes like that, but it also feels a bit too... Mm, I don't know. Like, a lot of the map feels to me that it hasn't been touched by a nuclear apocalypse at all. So, it would make money, considering, like... How, how many people here like the, the really depressing storylines in New Vegas? Put a one in the chat if you like that. I feel like, you know, keeping some of the hope-filled shit that Fallout 76 has is good, yes. Have more hope-filled stories, maybe make some of the characters more optimistic, uh, make some of them nihilistic. Um, I don't know if that's the real term. Uh, pessimistic is probably the more accurate term to use. But... Yeah, I, I just feel like it's for so long we have missed this desolate feeling in the Fallout franchise. And this was their their chance to bring it back. And they didn't. So, never played New Vegas. You're banned from chat. Nah, I'm joking. Yeah, you should probably play it though. I, I love New Vegas. That's probably my favorite Fallout game. Um, Appalachia wasn't a... A... Target for nukes due to low population, so... It, so I don't mind a more hopeful tone. Alright, well, that's your opinion. I, I would personally like the, the really brutal uh, kind of thing that the... Uh, the the brutal kind of feel that the first two Fallout games were going for, and a little bit of Fallout 3 in New Vegas as well. I, I feel like I really like what they were going for in those games. Especially the pit. I've really missed the sort of mood that the pit had. Um... I really love the pit. Fallout Pennsylvania. Didn't Pennsylvania get trashed? Same in New York. Uh, call in time. Uh, it looks like Sterno's in the way to call in. I'm going to drag Sterno in. Hey, Sterno. What's going on, man? Hey, local. Shouldn't shouldn't you be banging rocks together? <laughs> <laughs> hey, local. Shouldn't you be banging rocks together or something? So this is... Uh, so this is... Similar to... Uh, to, to the topic, but... Generally, how do you feel about like for, for the Fallout Free chapter of the Brotherhood being present? Well, in Fallout Free, um, since you know, that's a good question. Uh, I disagree with the 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 Brotherhood's DC chapter, but I like the Outcasts because obviously one of them is yeah. a bit more OG, and the other one's like yeah, um, yeah, Lionsified, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I I like the idea of it uh, i think it would it's very plausible that the brotherhood would send uh a group of their own like a chapter uh to find yeah. the midwestern chapter if it ever existed and then go to dc because dc is like obviously got to be a powerhouse of technology the former capital yeah it's literally yeah. the former capital of the u.s so yeah I, I i think it's plausible that the brotherhood would send people yeah, there, yeah. especially in the time frame um I, it was like i would say like uh, uh, I would say like the thing that makes the follow free BOS uh, work and not the 76 is that the follow free BOS at least like did something exciting. We have, you know, we have a splitting. We have the bang rock together local gang. We have the, <laughs> hey, let's, let, let's be nice. 
Yeah, game. you have you have the the R slash nice guys and the hey look yeah. should you be banging rocks together or something guys and <laughs> I, I like that um, they actually yeah. tried something like that with Steel Dawn I think it was uh, there was a bit of a divide between two paladins in uh, the West Virginian first expeditionary force um, yeah. and that's something I like I, I like that type of storytelling where you know you have to make a choice but it's in yeah. the same faction I like that type yeah, of storytelling yeah, yeah. but F- I full on full on like Jedi and Sith yeah. But I don't believe it really belonged in Fallout 76 of all places. Because mm. obviously, I've, I've made my case very clear. I, I don't yeah, believe yeah, yeah. that the, uh, the Brotherhood of Steel belong in that mm. game. But uh, regarding the Fallout 3 Brotherhood of Steel, um, yeah. I have little to no issue with them, really. Um, I can see why some classic fans might disagree with it. But I think the writing yeah. is... Uh, the, the classic fans... Uh, not the classic fans. The, the writing, sorry, is very plausible it makes sense and i like the divide and yeah. honestly if i'm being honest i prefer the way the brotherhood of steel are written in fallout 3 than the enclave in fallout 3 i feel like oh, the yeah. enclave I were know. incredibly mishandled i feel like just the enclave just became like a stereotype of their motive because you know the the, the enclave in 2 were just like haha genocide yeah and uh, i'm gonna yeah. go to something that um the small carrier says in chat, by the way, I see you in uh, Collins, by the way, I'll drag you up in a sec when we're done talking to Sterno. Um, it is a shame that we can't do more with the outcasts, um, especially yeah. when yeah. some of the only stuff you can do is give them technology and yeah. also do a pay to win DLC. Uh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, they're like literally the only two things you can do with the outcasts, but I suppose it kind of makes sense not to be mm. able to do anything with them because that the like mm. them OG brotherhood, like true and through, like yeah, they yeah. don't give a shit about you. So like it yeah. makes sense, but it would also be nice. Why you pull up on our turf? Yeah, why aren't you banging rocks together? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now I'm gonna let you go, man. Thanks for calling in. Yo, yo, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, uh, okay, sweet. So yeah, so, yeah. What what do you uh, want to say? You got anything on your mind? Yeah, uh, a few things. First off, I just wanted to say uh, I just recently came across your channel and uh, I've been. Uh, just binge watching all your videos lately. Uh, so I just want to say great, great job and keep up uh, the content. I'm really enjoying it. Hey, thanks. Man. Um, yeah, uh, the inclusion of the Brotherhood in Appalachia was really, really annoying for me because when, like, when 76 first got announced, I was really excited because, you know, 25 years uh, after the bombs dropped in West Virginia, it just felt like it was the perfect setting to do something completely brand new and, like, the, the main criticism that old fans really have with Bethesda and, you know, a lot of criticisms that I generally tend to have is that they just seem so scared to, to really make new factions and new interesting storylines. And, you know, now the East Coast is completely dominated of everything from the West Coast. And I just hate this idea that even when they wrote it in that it seemed like a game should be should have its own unique uh, factions and stories, they still wanted to bring the brotherhood of steel in still wanted to have that same storyline and i don't know i just it's kind of annoying because it really makes the story of the brotherhood of steel just kind of convoluted now and and just messy because now you have this appalachia chapter that just doesn't it it never gets mentioned in any other game you know like what happened to what happened to them now this is supposed to be the earliest on the timeline yeah i I get I, i pretty much agree with literally everything you've said there and I do agree that throwing this has definitely thrown a wrench in the Brotherhood's history. And it mm-hmm. made researching for my most recent video, which was a, a history of the Brotherhood of Steel, uh, it made researching that video and getting the facts right so anxiety inducing because I didn't know which was like new law or old law. Was this like retcon from 76? Should I include it? Will people get pissed off? Because that's something that's happened to me in the past. Um, some people are like, oh, well, 76 isn't canon. Uh, well, that hasn't been confirmed, obviously. But people seemed really upset with the fact that I spoke about 76 and, like, kind of included it in my law videos before. And especially this time, e- like, I wasn't even peer pressured into this. This just felt wrong. I did not want to mention the Brotherhood's Appalachian chapter whatsoever in my video because, if anything, it just feels like a taint. And I understand exactly how you felt, um when you realized that the Brotherhood of Steel were going to be in this game. Um, it was pretty much the exact same feeling as me. I, I felt kind of... Uh, it, it being a blind Fallout fan, 
back in the day, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, Brotherhood, fuck yeah, Enclave, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was totally fine with all that shit, but then I became more dedicated to the lore, and dedicated to the stories that have been told, and I went back and played the old games and stuff, and I, I ended up thoroughly enjoying them, and it, this was even after I played New Vegas, um, but yeah, I didn't have much of an issue until I found out the way they did it, and, um, and people were like, okay, well, th- this is the issue I have, and this is why it doesn't really make sense for me. I was like, hmm, well, that's a good point, and I agree. And, yeah, it, it slowly turned from, like, a, a kind of neutral feeling to a sour feeling. Like, I just kind of feel o- almost disappointed that they, they had to shoehorn them in, and I totally <coughs> agree that they, they should have had some more OG, like, factions. I, I don't yeah. think it's, like, they're necessarily afraid to. It's just they're out of ideas. I mean, we, we have, like... Uh, going back to like Fallout Three, we have Riley's Ranges, um, that's Talon the Company, Talon Company. Yeah, uh, I um, mean, in, in Fallout even Fallout 4, Four, you had the Gunners. Yeah, yeah, the Gunners. You have the Railroad. You have the Institute. Like so, so many really cool factions that could have been expanded on greatly. Um, and then Fallout Seventy Six, you even have like the Responders and the waste, uh, the Settlers versus the Raiders in the Wastelanders quest line. All of that. That stuff, was really good. I, yeah, I really like that. I, I really like that as well. I, I never finished the Wastelanders questline, but I did spoil it for myself, and I really fucking enjoyed it. Like, honestly, we mm-hmm. need more of that in Fallout, and especially in 76, where you could literally revive what is, to me, a bit of a disappointing game, especially with the Brotherhood. Um, but yeah, like, honestly, I, I wouldn't say they're, like, scared to, it's just they don't really have many ideas. And I think... The more the the more time they have to sit and think on this and develop DLC and see what people like and dislike about seventy six and l- pretty much listen to everybody, um, right? The the more they'll start to develop more uh, original ideas because I definitely agree with you. Um, personally, if I was to change Fallout three in any way, I would love to see some more tribal factions, uh, like the tribals from from Point Lookout. I think that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, you mentioned some of the other factions. One of the one of the factions that they came up with that I think would be really, I I personally would really like to see be expanded on more, and I think could make a really great antagonist for a future game. I really want to explore more of the Children of the Atom. Oh, I think, yes, yes. Yeah, I think they can make a really good villain, like a really good antagonist uh, in an upcoming game. And again, it's just a very interesting faction that kind of is like a set a set decoration in a lot of their games, but not really a whole lot of lore connected to them. Yeah. It's, not really a whole lot of quests, you know, that they offer. And it's just a, a good idea, but not nothing all, you know, all show, but no substance. Yeah. That's actually a really great idea though. I didn't even think of that because to me, I've always kind of pushed the children of Atom to the back of my mind. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, they've always been kind of like a set decoration. They're not really present in fallout three, but they kind of are. And in mm-hmm. fallout four, they've, they've grown exponentially. Um, mm-hmm. And I think in Fallout 4, um, they, they they became a little bit of a, a loose connection to the main quest. Like, obviously, they're in the glow and shit. But, right. um, yeah, I would love to see that. Maybe, like, um, thinking off the top of my head here, like, maybe they see something as, like, Holy Land or something, and they, they have a bunch of zealots that are, like, trying to fucking kill you over, like, this, this holy relic that they have or something. That can make for, yeah. like, it, I don't think it would make a good main quest. Like, I'd probably need to sit and think of how to implement them into a main quest. But mm-hmm. for a side quest, that could be very good, especially like a bigger side quest, like right. Children of Adam Zealots trying to track you down and shit, kind of like the Legion Assassins from New Vegas, and uh, trying to get like a religious artifact from you or something. I think that would be yeah. so fucking cool. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential in in that, um, and I'm actually like writing uh, a, just a story like taking place in uh, where I'm from. Uh, and I, I kind of have the the children of the Adam being like the main antagonist, just because I think there's I think there's a lot of story there that they could explore, and like we already mentioned with so many of their factions that they they've come up with that they haven't explored themselves. I just think there's a lot of potential for a lot of rich storytelling that I I would like to see in, in more of their future games. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you there, and I'm really happy that you're you're kind of exploring. The children of Adam, because they are like the more I think of it, the more interesting they get to me. Um, mm-hmm. And I definitely think that Bethesda really need to kind of step into the light a bit and stop using, or, or like, well, don't stop like completely using them. Maybe kind of let them have a bit of a backseat for a while, but stop using so many Western 
uh, influences. Like, I, I think the only Western factions we could really need uh, in a future Fallout game are, like, Enclave. And yeah, I, I agree, yeah. yeah. If they were to do, um, like, any West Coast factions, to the extent that I'd like to see them, like, in the future games, like, for the Brotherhood, Brotherhood of Steel, exam for example, if they're going to continue to have their games be, like, on the East Coast, or at least far away from them, from the West Coast, I think... Uh, the best way they should deal with uh, factions like the Brotherhood of Steel or the Enclave is to basically do what New Vegas did with them, you know? Yeah. Have them there, you know, have their own quest lines, but don't... I, they, they sh I don't think they should be integral to the main main quest line of the game. Absolutely. I, I completely <laughs> agree there. Um, I think, depending on the time frame as well, um, I, I, I wouldn't mind the Brotherhood being there if it was late in the time frame, but since 76 is so early on, that's why it takes so much of an issue with it. Like, if it was very late in the timeline, say, like, it took place around Fallout 3, I'd, I'd mm -hmm. be fine with it. In fact, I'd probably really like it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the only reason I take issue with any of it, personally. Like, it's literally just timing, and um, that's the only reason I, I have an issue with it. Because I, I, I think a good way to uh, implement them into the story, say, if it was around the time of Fallout 3, or maybe even earlier, is that they're, like, uh, remnants who kind of split away from the DC chapter or the future DC chapter while I were traveling there from the Midwest and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Kind of like what Asher is to the pit, but yeah. it's like kind of like their own sub-faction in West Virginia and their influence has kind of grown a bit and they're recruiting and stuff. That's how I could see something like that working. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that would be pretty interesting. And similar to kind of like the outcasts too, I'm actually a little disappointed that Fallout 4 kind of confirmed that the outcasts rejoined... Uh, you know, a, a Maxon's chapter. Yeah. Because I thought seeing them kind of going off and being their own rogue chapter would have been really cool to explore in the future as well. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I really like the Outcasts as a faction, but personally, um, that's where you and I are gonna disagree because uh, I I think the the reunion of the Brotherhood, uh, from Fallout Three into Fallout Four's Commonwealth chapter, um, is something that I really like. Um, I I like mm. the fact that Maxon is a strong enough leader. To not only know how to tactically take care of the Institute, but to also mm -hmm. uh, reunite the outcasts with the original Brotherhood members and to focus on their old missions, which I think is exactly why I really have a bit of a distaste towards Lions and his Brotherhood. Uh, but yeah. I don't necessarily ag disagree with them being there. Yeah, Maxon's chapter definitely has the, the best of both uh, ideologies with the Brotherhood, with priority being the preservation of technology, but still allowing you know recruits and the kind of the sharing of technology but you know not not so much yeah absolutely um mm -hmm. i also think that um they shouldn't be connected to the original lost hills one because obviously uh, if you've done any deep diving into the dc brotherhood uh mm -hmm. you'll know that after lions basically tried to hide it from them that he was helping the the wastelanders and not focusing on his mission that's when they cut him off and when they cut him off, that basically meant that entire Eastern chapter of the Brotherhood was on their own. And I think right. it would be really cool to see them go back one day and possibly meet up with the Lost Hills Brotherhood, say, in like the Midwest or something. So it's kind of like both factions are coming halfway uh, somewhere mm -hmm. later in the timeline. So like maybe the 2290s or the 2300s. And we're seeing both of these factions kind of have like an outcast and an OG uh, style of, uh, I guess you could say, conflict again so it's kind of like outcast 2.0 from fallout 3 but in this this future uh imaginary fallout game and uh i, th I think that would be something that uh would be smart to keep around yeah because um I i'm not entirely sure if maxon actually made contact with the lost hills brotherhood of steel uh when i believe he was in... i believe he did i believe there's uh something in, in the game that says that he he did because i think they actually gave their like approval to for him to be the elder of the east coast if i remember correctly hmm. maybe maybe the chat uh, knows yeah i'm I'm not entirely <laughs> sure because I, I didn't really see any of it when i was doing my research from my video but i might be wrong uh if like say let, let's say hypothetically uh he never did and he was kind of just on his own going back mm -hmm. to the midwest and meeting them again could put them in that exact like outcast and og situation that they were in in fallout 3 and i think that'd be really cool yeah but, like, if he did, then <laughs> it's tossed that. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm not sure. That I might just be misremembering. I'm not even sure if I if I saw it in game or if I read it on uh, Wikipedia. I I don't remember. Uh, I think Fallout Week is a pretty trusty source. So it, even if you read it there, like that means you're uh -huh. right. I, I'm gonna have, actually have a look at that right now. Uh, but anyway, if if you've got nothing else to say, I'll uh, I'll let you go. If that's yeah, all perfect, right, Dad. Uh, thanks for yeah, coming no, in, absolutely. man. Yeah, th thank you for having me. Of great. course, dude. And uh, thank you for the kind words at the start. And uh, I hope you stick around, man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. All right. Cheers, man. Take it easy. Yeah. He's really nice. I like him. I, I love when I'm meeting new people in the in like my my little nimble community or whatever. Uh, not to sound big brain or whatever. <laughs> Thank you.